Welcome back. I made this pretty cool skill tree for my game and I'm gonna show you how I how it's done and feel free to give me feedback as well. So the camera pans in, the background's moving, we got some fog going on over here. Disregard this uh, thing at the very bottom there. The UI's moving a little bit. The UI's inspired by Persona 5 or whatever. I might change that. We got a light going back there. And there's gonna be a blood bar that goes up here and fills up to give you a skill point. Um, actually, let me show you that real quick. So, if I move my head. When you click the continue button, it takes you to the skill tree. And isn't that cool? It goes down and then on the roots here are gonna be the skills. So this was kind of the concept art for this scene. And you can see like the pixel art here is really done really quick. And I wanted to um, hire an artist to sort of take my visions and just polish them. And I've been, <laughs> I've been having trouble finding an artist I've worked with like three artists already. If you're an artist that's interested in polishing my artwork, uh, hit me up, uh, message I do, me. I do think that the Helix is kind of, uh, I think this was called, right, Hel Helix? I do think that it's kind of cool, but it looks a little bit less like Roots. In the comment section below, please tell me, because it's really hard for me to decide. Should I go with this sort of like Helix uh, looking uh, root, uh, Roots? And that kind of look like a DNA strand thing, but that's what I that's what I think of, and that's what kind of makes it cool, in my opinion. Or should I go with more kind of like um, uh, typical roots? But you guys, I want you to be part of this process. I want to make you happy. I want the game to be something you guys want to play. You're my fans. I'm making the game for you. So there's one skill here, and I haven't programmed in the skills yet. That's that's what I'm working on. I'm making sure that the skill tree works, that the game loop will work. Here you can see I have zero skill points. And um, you get skill points when you fill that blood meter up, which is what I'm about to show you. So really quick, I'm just gonna, I just grabbed that hammer or whatever. I need to collect some blood, so I'll just show you some blood collection. I don't know if you saw the blood particles pop out. But it's kind of... It's kind of a game to get the blood particles. I was thinking that they just come out, but I think it's kind of fun to have them bounce around because then just getting them becomes uh, kind of a game. And also, if you're using the fire gauntlet and you're killing enemies at a distance, it makes you have to go in and uh, and pick up the blood. So you can see I picked up the blood, I got 28 right there. And now I'm just gonna uh, kill myself to go back. Okay, so when you die, you go back to the skill tree and um, I'll, I'll fix the transitions a little bit better. I'm gonna polish everything, okay? This bar went up and now it shows me I'm 30% towards getting a skill point. So collecting the blood is kind of like collecting X but the reason why I like this so much is because dying um, actually feels good. Uh, and even move the if, camera from the upper part to the lower part. And um, I love doing this uh, before we get into that, that everything's um, flat here. So there's games like Darkest uh, Dungeon that they actually moved the layers uh, forward and back. And I'm pretty sure they do this. I might, I might, be, I might be wrong, but so you can separate, you can separate layers like this, even in a, 2D game in Unity, and then if I go into the game view, um, well, my camera isn't rendering it right now because uh, the camera has a render distance here, the far plane. I would need to increase this. You see, this show. This is how far the camera can see. So everything's on on one plane, and the way I organized it, when everything's on one plane in Unity you use uh, sorting layers. And there's a bunch of different layers for this. I just have it on default, but you can see, you can even go in, into negative. And basically you just put in different numbers here and that's what decides the order. A lot of people think that you should use um, the Z axis. And if you're doing a 3D game, the Z axis is fine. But for 2D games, you really wanna use sorting layers. And this actually gives you a lot of control um, uh, with, and this actually is really powerful because you can even have different layers when I drag across this, 
this is what the animation is. So the camera comes down, that pans in, and you can see it almost looks 3D. And if you look at the background, the trees move independently. So especially right here, you can see um, it kind of gives it this look like the camera is coming down and in. I did this same thing for the Dwerve start screen. That's a game that I re uh, recently finished. And all you have to do is move the layers up at different rates and it'll give you that look. So how, how I like to animate stuff is I click the record button right here and then I click on an object and then any changes you make here in the inspector to the object, they get recorded as a keyframe um, for that layer. However, I don't know if you noticed, but um, I have the trees swaying a little bit and let me see which ones these are. So these trees right here, um, you can see I have, I'm swinging them using a tween. So instead of using an animation, most of the time, I prefer to just use tweens. And these are very simple animations. And if I hit play here, we can see what this animation does. I'm going to over exaggerate the Z movement here. I'm gonna put like uh, three here. And now you can see those trees are swaying back and forth. And this just makes them look a little bit more lively. It makes the scene look less static. So I just put a tween here and I set it to loop. And now it kind of look, looks like the wind is blowing. And I'm not using the animator. I'm using tweens. It's called do tween. And I'm using the uh, I'm using the free one right here. What I did here is I make it just like oscillate. It grows a little bit and it shrinks a little bit. And I was uh, playing Persona 5 and I noticed that the UI was not static and I thought that that was pretty cool. It's it's fun to make it move a little bit. So I added a tween there to make it oscillate a tiny bit and I might use this like square UI for stuff. I don't know, I, there's design decisions like that that I still need to make so I value your opinion. So I could use maybe that same sort of edge all over here. So what do you think? Does it look better if it has that gold border around it? The, those trees are swaying, the trees behind that are swaying. Even this light beam here is swaying a little bit back and forth. Oh, let me show you how I did some of that stuff. Since I have it set to pre-warm, when I hit restart, I can kind of see the different uh, scenarios of it that I could have. The emission I'm doing is burst, and then I have it set to loop. So it's kind of, uh, uh, you could do rate over time as well. And you see how that's uh, coming up over there. So for the emission, what I like to use is an edge. And an edge is just a line. So if I hit restart here, you can you can see it's all coming off of this line. Color over lifetime. The main thing I just do is I have it, it fade in and fade out, the opacity. And then I also like to change the, the size over lifetime. And the most important part is to get it to look like that fog, you have to use a, I use a texture sheet animation. And here you can have it, it be animated uh, the smoke literally be animated, but that's just too much work and it's excessive and it, I don't need that. For some particles, sure, but I'm using this sprite here and this isn't pixel art and doing um, fog or smoke with pixel art looks okay majority of the time, but um, I don't really care about sticking to the limitations of pixel art. So I, I, I really like how I made the fog look and, and I like that the fog looks realistic look at that the, the fog is amazing and so i don't I, I love using unity but without feeling like i need to limit myself to what the super nintendo was uh capable of or whatever right here on this block you can see underneath me there's a shadow and uh on the enemies as well i, I feel like that's a really nice uh a really nice touch i was playing terraria the other day and i noticed that like terraria doesn't really have that many that many particles and um this game honestly if you look at like you know the way i have the attacks uh, and stuff uh working it, it is partially inspired by terraria and you're destroying these dirt blocks i did like the combat in terraria and i do like the idea of of like going down a, a, a cavern and picking which route you go down if you're new to the channel and you're a game developer or a pixel artist we have a discord community that you should totally join and it's awesome so for this game, I'm going to have to do a Kickstarter to finish it. So please um, follow this project. And, and so it motivates me and helps me fight depression. Thanks for watching. Hang in there with your game or your art. And I'll see you next week.
a devlock.